Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malik here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for July 21st, 2021, according around 4.37 p.m. Eastern Time. Not too much to talk about today, but a look at an area to watch off the southeastern United States coast and a look at when more favorable conditions will return to the Atlantic over the next several weeks. Let's go ahead and jump straight into everything, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon. Not too much ongoing at the moment. Some very robust tropical waves down here in the southern part of the main development region, uh, south of the Cabo Verde Islands. Although there is some very dry, stable air up here to the north, and these waves, as they move towards the west-northwest, will encounter this less favorable environment to the north. So these should not go on to develop at all, but they will. Uh, the remnant energy with these will move through parts of the Lesser Antilles within the next couple of days or so, bringing with it, again, some squally conditions, you know, heavy rainfall, the potential for flooding, uh, kind of the same, you know, type setup that you get normally during the hurricane season anyway, uh, but nothing really to watch there. Uh, but we will be watching an area that is right now over land, actually, an area of disturbed weather, uh, which has been marked as an area of interest in AOI by the National Hurricane Center. Uh, this little spin of energy right here is expected to drift around and south into uh, parts of the southeast coast and out into the Gulf Stream. And this is where development chances may occur, although development chances right now are only at about a 20% chance, which we'll look at here in a moment. And otherwise than that, the rest of the tropical Atlantic is pretty quiet. And the Eastern Pacific also does not have any named storms uh, either. So again, this is the area of interest uh, outlined here by the National Hurricane Center. Again, this is an area of spin right now uh, over parts of Mississippi and Alabama. This will be moving southward, kind of towards the southeast over the next several days, and eventually reemerge then over water into the Gulf Stream or some subsequent development further after that would be possible once the sensors water. Again, so th this will be something to kind of monitor, again, for areas that are along the southeast coast, Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina, and then maybe uh, eventually places like North Carolina, et cetera, may have to be dealing with, the, with this uh, down the road. But again, as of right now, not really a big concern at the moment. Uh, sea surface temperatures in this area are certainly plentiful warm for tropical cyclone Genesis. We notice that the sea surface temperatures out and through here uh, are roughly at about 28 uh, Celsius or so. Uh, this definitely indicates that a prime environment, uh, the third dynamic environment, would be uh, probable out here, where this definitely has uh, a lot of things to work with in the Gulf Stream. Again, the Gulf Stream magic, uh, we've seen things develop in the Gulf Stream. We remember Bill... Uh, and, you know, we had a, a couple of other storms, you know, Claudette even, uh, you know, Gulf Stream Magic, but Gulf Stream Magic does do some things. So, uh, you know, but just looking at the overall uh, environment down the road, which we'll take a look at here in a moment, conditions aren't all that favorable, but sea surface temperatures are there. The upper ocean heat content map, this updated as of this morning. Again, just for context here, these reds and whites here, this is or basically the oranges and reds. This is basically higher upper ocean heat content, really anywhere from the lighter blue colors onwards towards the right of the scale and the warmer colors. This represents higher upper ocean heat content and more favorable thermodynamic environment for tropical cyclones to take advantage of. And what we notice here, kind of zooming in, on the southeast United States here, again, uh, this is kind of the Carolinas open through here. And, of course, this is Florida. Uh, where our system would be coming off in is the Gulf Stream right in through here. And you notice that there is some blues here, some of the lighter blues, and even some of those greens starting to show up. This indicates that there is pretty substantial upper ocean heat content in this part of the environment, in this part of the world. And uh, subsequently, there would be the, the probability that something would end up developing or trying to develop out there uh, across that part there. The other uh, very important thing that I've kind of been noticing here is this area of uh, dark red that's been showing up in the central and eastern Gulf of Mexico this is incredibly important for, especially late season, if this ends up holding on. We notice that there's also some of this starting to now show up uh, towards the west of Jamaica. But this is kind of important because this represents a very potent uh, thermodynamic sea surface temperature environment where the sea surface temperatures are warm, uh, very warm actually, at about uh, 29, 30 Celsius. And you've got some very high upper ocean heat content which is basically rocket fuel for these tropical cyclones to take advantage of. And if you get a storm under the right conditions, uh, you know, upper level conditions, they can certainly 
be packing a punch in through here with some of this very high up motion heat content. And we saw that last year with Delta, uh, how it kind of really got its uh, grounds down here, strengthened to a very strong category four before weakening and then strengthening once again up and through this region and through here. But again, it's just kind of important to kind of notice how this is all kind of now here that this is, uh, you know, starting to become more of a factor as we get later and later into the upcoming hurricane season. Now, again, the two tropical waves that we're kind of monitoring down here, again, we kind of see a northern lobe to this here, and this is energy that's broken off from the monsoon trough. This tropical wave is pretty far north at about uh, 15, 16 north latitude, and sea surface temperatures out in here are just not really warm enough yet for development. But sea surface temperatures are warm enough down here in the southern part of the main development region, south of about 10 degrees north. And uh, we noticed that if we look back here at the upper ocean heat content map and we kind of zoom out, 10 degrees north kind of goes something like this. Almost a perfect straight line today. That's nice. <laughs> but everything below about 10 degrees uh, north latitude here is very favorable for tropical cyclone development, at least in the thermodynamic sense. Upper level conditions, though, are still really uh, going against development, as we would suspect for late July anyway. Uh, but once you start getting it about uh, past really about 45 degrees north or, uh, or 45 degrees west, I'm sorry, uh, you really start to pick up the very favorable uh, water temperature environment, sea surface temperature profiles out and through here where the upper ocean heat content really begins to surge upwards. Uh, so again, this is kind of where we're looking uh, right now for these kind of areas of energy, but no development expected out of there. And I would not suspect anything to come of that. Our next area, again, right now, sitting over kind of Mississippi and Alabama, right in through here, this big uh, kind of stretched out vorticity lobe. We notice that this is kind of also uh, that this is very strung out. This is probably some type of front that's in through here. This is probable that this is all entangled within a front. And you've got these different kind of like sectors of, of energy here that's kind of blowing up after, you know, passing through the Gulf Stream and stuff like that. These are non-tropical, though. Uh, this one is the one that we'll be watching to come out and south into the Gulf of Mexico, potentially, or, uh, you know, somewhere along the southeast United States coast. Now, this is one thing I did find interesting. This is the European Ensemble 850 to 200 millibar wind, and this is the wind shear, in fact, in knots. And what we notice here, for people who are familiar with this, this goes out to hour 288. So this goes out all the way to about August 2nd. This is valid uh, for 12Z or 8 a.m. Uh, Monday on August 2nd, 2021. For people who know what they're looking at, this is very unfavorable for tropical cyclone uh, development. We have a, but for people who are unfamiliar, we have a strong uh, kind of upper level low that's in through here. This is actually what's known as a tropical upper trosopheric trough or a TUTT, T U T T. We basically can kind of follow the wind barbs around here. We notice that uh, the strongest part of the wind axis is going to be located always to the south of this tut. And we notice how then it curves back up and around. And this is kind of the axis of that wave that's in through here. This is the axis of the tut. Now, what this basically does is it enhances vertical wind shear basically all around here. And the only area that's actually semi-favorable is located kind of right here in the middle of the wave axis, but you still have some pretty strong winds that are actually kind of coming out of the uh, kind of the north here and blowing across the system. So it'd be forcing convection basically towards the south and east. But we have very strong uh, shear in through here of about 60 to 70 knots of shear that's uh, embedded within this region over parts of Hispaniola in the Caribbean. Very unfavorable for tropical cyclone genesis, and we also see that there's also going to be a big uh, vertical shear axis that's going to be located out here uh, around Florida and around the Bahamas. So at least for that, uh, we notice that there's not really anything going on there. And then uh, we start to kind of reduce that vertical shear once we start getting into the western part. But we still notice that there is still some shear that's being impinged on anything that would be trying to develop out there across parts of the western uh, kind of the, the, the Western Caribbean and uh, parts of the Southern Gulf. So very unfavorable look for tropical cyclone development, at least through about August 2nd. But what about, August, what about after August 2nd? So this is the CFS, the Climate Forecast System, 200 millibar velocity potential anomalies. And this goes from about the uh, 60 August 4th until about 60 August 11th. So 2 a.m. August uh, from about 2 a.m. 
on the 4th of August to 2 a.m. on the 11th of August, days 15 through 21. And what we're looking at here is, again, all these greens, this is uh, rising air in the atmosphere. And these browns here, this is uh, kind of the browns and oranges, this is suppressed air. Uh, and the Mount and Julian oscillation, this is basically a, an, an, MJO, an MJO pulse, We'll be moving across parts of the Eastern Pacific first, and this is where, again, development chances in the Eastern Pacific remain elevated, at least for now, but this will eventually propagate over into parts of the Western Hemisphere and eventually uh, over Africa, and we kind of start to see some of this upward moving air begin to kind of enter the realm here of southern parts of Africa, and this will eventually translate over Africa. So you're looking from about August, from about mid-August till about somewhere in between September, you know, about September 10th or whatever, is where we would probably start to see a window of when we could expect these hurricanes to be rolling off or these tropical waves to be rolling off and then subsequent development thereafter. This is a pretty strong MJO pulse with uh, numbers that exceed about uh, minus one, uh, which indicates that there is some pretty strong upward moving air with this. So I would I would not expect to see any development, at least any substantial development, at least from uh, Africa and tropical waves that come off of there until about August 11th or so. After that time frame, development chances look to be on the increase as we begin to get this MJO pulse to move over parts of Africa. And again, this MJO pulse moves pretty slow. It's not like these uh, Kelvin waves, these convectively coupled Kelvin waves that are transient, only lasting a couple of weeks. A Mount and Julian oscillation can last uh, months and potentially even half a year or so. And that's when I do think that things will start to become uh, very lit up, especially over parts of the Eastern Pacific first, and then migrating into the Atlantic Basin. And this is, I think, partially why uh, the models are sniffing out on a big trade surge here, not only uh, from this tropical upper tropospheric trough, you get these very strong trades through here, but we can also see that there is uh, some pretty strong upper level winds that are kind of blowing from west to east across here, indicating that there could be some favorable environment for tropical cyclones in the eastern Pacific, enhancing this vertical shear distribution uh, in parts of the Caribbean. So anything that comes into the Caribbean would probably easily be shred off and development chances then uh, would probably cease after that point. Now, looking at least in the short term range, this is the GFS forecast, the 12 uh, Z run valid for 2 p.m. this afternoon. And again, what we're looking at here, this is the A50 vorticity map. So again, these darker reds, this is your higher cyclonic spin out, your 5,000 foot level. And again, Here's our tropical wave right now. Again, you can very clearly see in the wave energy in the isobars here, this, this little kink in through here. This is uh, indicative of that tropical wave that's located in through here, but nothing expected to develop at this time. Here's our piece of energy that we're going to be watching off the coast here, or moving uh, towards the coast here of the southeast United States. And what we'll kind of notice is that we get this little energy kind of left behind over uh, parts of the southeast coast and over Florida uh, by about Sunday morning. And this is when this energy is expected to be somewhere here uh, within the southeastern United States coast. Now, if you look here at the 200 millibar wind here, we'll notice that the environment is just generally not really favorable for development. Again, we have a tropical upper tropospheric trough uh, that is kind of digging in across here at this time, uh, creating some shear across the tropical Atlantic. We have kind of a cutoff low here over parts of uh, Mexico and the far western parts of the Gulf of Mexico. And then we kind of have this area where we have a ridge of high pressure over parts of kind of this cutoff high uh, that is located really between uh, Arkansas and Missouri. And the flow around this is generally kind of all going to be generally uh, one that is going to be coming kind of from the north and coming back towards uh, the west. And this would kind of be something uh, that we saw almost like in a situation with uh, Bill earlier this year, I believe it was, that we kind of had that storm uh, that kind of quickly formed off across here. I can't remember. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It was Danny. Uh, that formed really close off the coast of the United States coast here and you kind of had a similar result pattern from this. So this almost kind of reminds me of a Danny type setup. 
Uh, if we look here at just an, an area of sounding average for this area, we notice that uh, we do have some very dry air aloft. So this would be the one thing that would kind of be preventative of tropical cyclones. And we also have shear. Uh, we have uh, wind here at the surface coming out of the south. And at about uh, 500 millibars or so, at about 18,400 feet in the atmosphere, we have winds now coming generally out of the east. And about 200 millibars, uh, up basically closer to the top of the troposphere, we have winds coming out of the northwest. Now, none of these shear vectors are really strong. We notice that there's not really a lot of strong shear, uh, but there would be about 15 knots of shear as, again, this wind is very erratic in the upper parts of the atmosphere. Not very strong, only about the five, you know, about 10 knots or so, five to 10 knots, uh, but that is still just enough to kind of create a little bit of shear. And uh, if we kind of continue to move this forward, again, we kind of notice that the pattern does become a little bit better uh, roughly by about day five or so. This is out to about uh, 8 a.m. Monday. And if we look here at the 850 vorticity map, we'll see now that we have an area of strung out vorticity that is kind of in the Gulf of Mexico. We have an area out here in the Gulf of Mexico and an area that is kind of still over parts of Florida in the southeast coast. At this particular time, we also notice that we may have another tropical cyclone trying to develop here, at least on the GFS forecast, over, cross, uh, over parts of the eastern Pacific. But if we take kind of a, an area average sounding, again, looking at this, we also notice that, again, this is an even drier environment, though the vertical shear distribution is a lot less because we have an upper level anticyclone, but we have some very strong uh, dry air aloft at about 57 knots of relative humidity. And then if we kind of subsequently take a look here off the southeast, southeast United States coast, we also notice that this area, while it's a little bit more moist towards the surface, you also have a little bit more of cyclonic uh, curvature here, indicating that there's probably some of this return flow now. And we are also getting, again, some pretty dry air in the middle part of the atmosphere. So not really kind of really looking for anything at this moment. Uh, then just kind of go out further in time. Again, the GFS trying to spin up another hurricane, what it looks to be a hurricane in the, G in the modeling there. Uh, the Euro, just for what it's worth, again, the European model, it does kind of go for a little bit of amplification on the northern part of this wave envelope here and moves that into the southeast United States coast here and kind of another part that ends up here in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, you can never really trust systems in the Gulf of Mexico this time of the year. So that's just why I'm saying just even though the pattern is unfavorable at the moment, we just have to kind of keep monitoring everything and daily uploads kind of will resume at this point just because we kind of have something to watch. So, all right. So with that being said, um, I do have a little bit of an announcement here. So again, daily uploads will be kind of starting again because we do have something to kind of now keep an eye on. And then we'll kind of be continuing that theme into August as the pattern is going to be increasingly more favorable as we move uh, through the next uh, couple of weeks here. Uh, also, another thing, let me know if this would be good. I'm going to post a poll um, in the community section as well here in a little bit. But uh, if you would like to, guys, if you if you guys would like to see any, uh, you know, content relating to recon flights, uh, more particularly from like Flight Sim or whatever, I got that working now. I, I understand how that concept works. Uh, and we can do some really cool like time lapse of flying into hurricane eyes and stuff like that from a simulator. It's actually really cool. So We'll see what's going on there, but let me, you know, let me know in the comment section down below. Otherwise than that, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon. And of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.